What's your fondest memory? I'm sure that you've got many. Uh, I can't... I, I'd be struggling to pick one specific moment, but I could pick out a couple. Um, I... Actually, it's probably... It's... Um, the most memorable is my biggest mistake to date, Touchwood, when I introduced uh, Steve Davis as Dennis Taylor by mistake when he came out for the session against Neil Robertson. He'd done amazingly well, Steve. He'd made the uh, quarterfinals in his 50s. And luckily for me, he's an incredible guy to work with. He's so generous and he understands that sometimes you make mistakes in television. Also, luckily for me, he was 12-4 down to Neil Robertson when he came out. So the match is almost over. Robbo needs one frame and he's, and he's through. And Steve had already had his great days at the Crucible. He'd done brilliantly to, to get that far that year in 2010. 2010 also happened to be 25 years on from the final and the black ball. And in my ear, I could hear a lot of people talking Davis Taylor. They were going to do a one frame rematch. So many, many days during that tournament, you were hearing the words Davis and Taylor the Davis-Taylor rematch. Also, Dennis was in the commentary box, so I had introduced Dennis to the assembled auditorium, and then we go quiet for a moment or two, and then comes the, the, the live element in terms of the television audience is concerned. And I, I gave it the big one and said, you know, he's flourishing into his 50s, he's a six-time champion of the world, he's one of the, great, the game's great ambassadors, Ladies and gentlemen, here he comes. And I looked at the crowd. And sometimes it's quite nice to engage people in eye contact because you can sense that they're feeling as excited as you are. And I just, I don't know, I just lost my concentration. And instead of saying, here he comes, Steve Davis, I said, here he comes, Dennis Taylor. And then I, I immediately, <laughs> the split second the words had left my lips, I realised what I'd done. And I said, oh, Steve Davis. And... I looked at the camera and shrugged my shoulders and as if to say, oh, I'm sorry about that, and smiled. And then when Davis came out, he hugged me. The crowd went mad. And actually to the point where some of them said, that was really funny, did you do it on purpose? And I said, no, I said, if you know me, you would have been able to tell straight away that I was genuinely mortified that I'd made that mistake. So you might think it's weird that I picked that out as one of my all time memories but it is one of the most memorable things that's happened to me. And you just, you know, sometimes you do make mistakes. And, and, and I did on that occasion. And, and I think the biggest lesson I learned from that is I think I was lucky on two levels with that. One, Steve took it very well and we hugged. And secondly, I didn't try and pretend that I hadn't made the mistake. I was very human and I wasn't thinking that. I just reacted out of instinct. But... I, I looked at the camera and said, oh, of course, I meant Steve Davis. And I smiled and shrugged my shoulders. And I think you generally only transmit awkwardness to an audience when you try and pretend that you haven't just made that mistake. You've got to be very human. And people do make mistakes. You know, when you, you do it in everyday, your everyday job, everybody does. But when your job is standing around in a snooker auditorium for that fortnight and there's complete silence and the player's waiting and the camera's on him. If you call out the wrong name, <laughs> you know, you're going to know about it pretty quickly. So that was, that was one of my me memories. And then, um, actually, the other one is, is, is Steve as well. Um, when Steve announced he was uh, finally retiring and he did a, he did a walk round the Crucible Auditorium and then I spoke to him at the end and... To, to kind of, to help initiate that moment was a real honour. And at the end, I, I was trying to talk to him. I, I think we exchanged a couple of questions and answers. And then in the end, th there was so much emotion from the crowd and there was so much emotion in him. I think I might have said something to him like, this, this, doesn't, need any, this doesn't need any words. And I just hugged him in a completely different way to when I hugged him after I'd made my mistake. And, and, then, and I hugged him and then stood back and he just, this standing ovation just went on and on and on. Um, and my third memory, again, is at the Crucible. And if, if you've never seen this, 
you need to YouTube it because it's absolutely incredible. It's got nothing to do with me. I just happen to be in the auditorium. It's about the two men concerned. The last session of the World Championship final in 2011 between John Higgins and Judd Trump is the noisiest, most passionate sound I have ever heard from any snooker crowd at any venue anywhere. And I'm saying that, you know, I've heard Wembley crowds and Ali Pali crowds go wild for O'Sullivan, especially some of those great finals at Wembley uh, when, when Mark Selby went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ronnie with 2,000 plus in the arena. Nothing I've ever worked on by way of a snooker introduction has ever created as much noise as that. I think it was, it was partly that John was coming to the end of a, of a very, very um, emotional and difficult season, one in which his dad had died, one in which he'd come back from a, an impossible deficit against Williams to win the UK title at the back end of 10. So there was, there was emotion riding on it for John. And as far as the wider public were concerned, Judd Trump had come out of nowhere. He hadn't, of course. He'd been at the Crucible before, and, and many people who'd been involved with snooker, like me, had heard of him many years before that as a talented teenager and as a kid. But as far as Joe Bloggs was concerned, Judd Trump just kind of rocked up with a cue and had a crack, and he was lashing in long pots all over the place. He was sending tweets out, you know, in mid-session intervals, and... He just captured the public's imagination. And it was so close when they came out. Even John, you've got to bear in mind how many world titles he'd won and how many world finals he'd already been in before that one with Trump in 11. Even he looked shell-shocked because the standing ovation for both of them seemed to me, looking back on it in my mind, although it was seven plus years ago, it must have lasted three or four minutes. It was absolutely incredible. So the two Davis moments, for very different reasons, and the last session of uh, Trump and Higgins in 11, that, those, those are probably the ones that stand out. That's incredible. 